Welcome to the Moody Center, located right here in Northfield, Massachusetts, the birthplace and where I am right now, the living residence for many years of Mr. D.L. Moody, who in the mid to late 1800s preached the gospel to over 100 million people worldwide. This program you're watching now is scheduled to be on every Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m. and is aired two other times during the week. My name is Dennis Jacob, and as pastor in residence here at the Moody Center, it's my joy to bring you a gospel message each week from different verses of scripture, followed by and along with my daughter, a Christian song that we pray will bless your heart. The Moody Center also has a live radio program on WLPV 97.3 FM out of Greenfield every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. This program includes six studio recorded songs, scripture readings from the Gospels and the Psalms, Moody ministry moments where we look into the life and ministry of D.L. Moody, principles of Bible study to provide encouragement in the serious study of God's Word, and then finally, a different Bible study every day to lift your hearts towards God. So if you have time right now, I pray you'll stay right here with us at the Moody Center, and also tune in when you can to 97.3 FM, Tuesdays through Thursdays from 3 to 4 p.m. God bless. Before Jesus ascended to heaven, he gave a clear command to his disciples to go with the gospel and make disciples in all nations, baptizing those who believe in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and also teaching those new believers to do and obey all the ways and commands of Christ. This is still the formula today for making disciples of Jesus Christ. Now. There was a church in a place called Antioch. It was located in what is today the Mediterranean coast of Syria, north of Israel and Lebanon. And it was from this church that the first official sending of missionaries into all the world happened. Acts chapter 13, verses 1 to 5. Let me read it for you. It says, Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. And John mentioned here is John Mark, who is the writer of the Gospel of Mark. So what do we find happening here in this passage? There was in this church prophets and teachers, and there was ministering and fasting, which is usually coupled with prayer. Then we see the Holy Spirit getting directly involved in telling the church that Saul and Barnabas were to be sent out from them for a work that God had called them to. The response was simple and obedient. They fasted and prayed. And then they sent them away. It must have been very exciting for both the church family as well as Saul and Barnabas to know that they were doing what God wanted them to do. These men, Barnabas and Saul, along with John Mark, traveled to Cyprus first and then spent the rest of the time going to a number of cities throughout what today is called Turkey. Back then, 
that region was broken up into smaller countries and again regions or areas like called Pamphylia, Galatia, Cappadocia. And all of these particular regions were of course under the thumb of the Roman Empire. Now I'll read just one example of the gospel efforts of these men in the city of Iconium which was in Galatia and give you a sense of some of the things they experienced. So Acts chapter 14 and I'm going to read verses 1 to 7. Now it happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews. That was the habit of the Apostle Paul. He would oftentimes go to the synagogue first and preach to the Jews and then he would preach to the rest of the city. And so spoke that a great multitude both of the Jews and of the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles, the other ones who didn't believe, and poisoned their minds against the brethren, against these men who were just simply preaching the gospel. Therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. In other words, just like John's gospel explains, Jesus did the miracles and the wonders to authenticate the fact that he was the Christ, the son of the living God. God gave these men the ability to do signs and wonders to authenticate or show the fact that they were given the authoritative word of God. It was all about the giving of the word of God and the messages. And the purpose of the signs and wonders was to get the attention on the message that they were preaching. But the multitude of the city was divided. Part sided with the Jews and part with the apostles. And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia, and to the surrounding region. And they were preaching the gospel there. So even this place, Lyconia, this is all a part of what we would now look and go, oh, that's the land of Turkey. But this is all the different names of these regions that were broken up. So the work of the gospel especially in places where people are highly offended by Jesus Christ and the preaching of the resurrection. It's always been very challenging and even dangerous. It was then in that day and all around the world today, the work of the gospel in many ways is no different. In some places, Christ is hated, so the messengers of the gospel are hated as well and sometimes their lives are under threat sometimes they're thrown in prison that's the way it is in many places around the world today even when this first missionary journey came to a conclusion where do we find these men Barnabas and Saul heading to they returned to the very place where the Holy Spirit had sent them from. They returned to Antioch. We're going to read about that right now in the book of Acts, chapter 14, verses 21 to 28. And it says, And when they had preached the gospel to the city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, this is another Antioch that was way up in that region, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. So when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. And after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. 
And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia. And from there, they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work which they had completed. Now when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them, and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So they stayed there a long time with the disciples. So we see here a wonderful pattern, a great pattern, which is still followed today in evangelical Christian churches. Missionaries are sent out to do the work of the gospel, and maybe two years, three years, four years, a period of time goes by, and they return to the church or churches that support them both in prayer and financially. And they report what God has been doing through them during that period of time. I pray that you're a part of the Lord's worldwide effort to bring the gospel to the nations. This is the primary purpose for a church to exist, to make disciples both locally and worldwide. If you're a follower of Christ, then you know your calling. And I pray God's help and strength for you as you seek to do all you can for His kingdom until He comes. Maranatha.